All right, guys, so now we've got this red on here. It's good and dry. So as you can see, nice gloss coat of red uh, because I'm using a gloss enamel. And there's all this tape on here. Underneath the tape is the black. So we've got one color left. We need to put the white on there. Uh, in order to do that, first of all, we're going to need to scuff this so that the new paint can stick. As you all probably know, if you've been watching my channel for a while, uh, or if you know much about painting, you can't really paint over gloss unless you're dealing with lacquer because it melts into itself. But with enamels and polyurethanes and most paints, you need to abrade it a little bit so that you can get that mechanical adhesion. So we're going to give this thing a quick scuff. Um, you don't need to sand the heck out of it. You don't really need to pull a bunch of paint off. You just need to get rid of that gloss. So to do that, I'm just using a Scotch-Brite pad. Uh, as you can see, I'm not even using actual sandpaper. This is just an abrasive pad, kind of like those green ones that you use for, uh, for cleaning stainless steel dishes. Uh, but this one's gray. It's a little less aggressive. The red is somewhere in between the two. The red would also work well. I don't like to use the green for this because it's kind of coarse and there's really no need for that. So I'm just going to go through, as you can see, kind of go over the whole thing and make sure I'm pulling off that gloss so that I get a little bit of a duller finish here. Uh, and that's how I know that my next layer of paint is going to stick. Now, before you'll notice I, I taped off, I had, I had the black guitar to start with. So I taped off the areas that I wanted to just kind of leave black. It wasn't very much. And then I coated the rest of the guitar, the whole guitar, in this red. Now, red is the predominant color on these uh, Frankenstrats. So when I go to do the white, it's the same concept. I'm going to tape off the areas that I want to leave red, but I'm going to approach it a little bit differently in that I'm going to tape off kind of in reverse to leave gaps for the white. It's just kind of a different way of looking at it. So you'll kind of notice how I do that. Um, there's not a whole lot to it. But if I'd started with a red guitar, <laughs> this would have been a little bit easier. Um, once I've got this scuffed, which will be very soon, uh, I do need to clean it. Now you're going to want to use probably some kind of wax and grease remover to clean it because you've presumably had your hands on it. Even if you were wearing gloves, it's kind of the safe move, if you will to use something like that. So if you're just looking for stuff around the house, uh, if you've got lighter fluid, lighter fluid works really well, um, naphtha, stuff like that, or just Windex. Windex is usually perfectly sufficient. So that's what I'm gonna use. You don't need to be, go crazy with it. You just need to wipe off any fingerprints and stuff. Just wipe, wipe off the dust, the prints, any, anything that may have gotten on that surface. Um, so that it's nice and clean and nothing contaminates the next part of the paint job. So now you need to figure out what areas you want to turn white. Um, a reference picture would probably help. But generally speaking, what you're going to do is just say I want a white line across. Uh, you can't see that. A white line across here. I'm going to lay a strip of tape here and a strip of tape here and just leave that, the area that I want white, unmasked. So as opposed to before, when I was kind of like, oh, I want this part to stay black, I'm going to leave that black. Again, the concept is the same, except that now I'm thinking about not the parts that I want to leave red, but rather the parts that I want to turn white. There's not, not a whole lot to this. It's a fairly straightforward process. Um, and it may seem that I'm throwing tape on there kind of at random. And I'll be honest with you, I kind of am doing exactly that. But if I'm not mistaken, that's kind of the whole idea behind these EVH style Frankenstrat, Bumblebee guitars and all that. So that's what I'm doing. All right, guys, so now that this guitar has been thoroughly mummified, uh, all that's left in 
un unmasked are the areas that are going to be painted white and the areas that there was already tape so really doesn't matter because there's already tape there protecting it so it's going to be black when we're done um, so i've got some white here some matte white doesn't really matter if it's matte or gloss either way i'm going to have to scuff it down a little bit before i go to apply my clear coat so this is going to be the last color for this guitar and then uh, when we do go to clear coat it i'm probably going to use a, i mean you can use an enamel obviously you can use the same kind of paint you're sticking with uh, I'm probably going to let this all cure fully and then I'm going to go in with uh, catalyzed polyurethane from a can. So I'm going to do that as a separate tutorial, but I'll let you guys know at the end of this video where that's going to be if you want to find it. So this is going to be pretty much the same thing we've been doing. Uh, I'm just going to look for the areas that, that aren't masked anymore and spray those. And that's going to be what I focus on. So unlike before where I was just spraying the whole guitar, uh, now I don't necessarily need to do that because so much of it is masked up that I can really just focus on those areas where I'm actually going to end up with a white finish. That was taped. So you can of course go in and just spray the whole thing. Uh, the same way as we did before when you when you go to do this part or if you want to conserve a little bit of paint and possibly some time you can do it the way that I'm doing it right now which is again to just focus on those areas that are actually going to end up being white uh, I think that's don't be afraid to spray extra areas I th I've sprayed several that are taped up to stay black but uh, I thought I was just spraying just in case because I don't want to end up with red there with overspray on it. If it's not going to be black, I want it to be white. Doing it this way also allows me to just grip right on the guitar and turn it um, so I don't have the, the screw in there keeping this thing in place right now. Instead, I'm just maneuvering the guitar as I go. All right, so I think that's it. Uh, I might go through, yeah, I'm going to go through and do one more coat like that, um, but it's going to be the exact same thing, so I won't bother filming that because I think this video is going to end up being kind of long, and then I'm going to let that dry, and when that's over, it'll be time to unmask this. All right, guys, so it's only been maybe five minutes since my last coat of this white, but the matte paints tend to dry very quickly. This matte white dries very quickly, um, so I'm just going to carefully start peeling the tape off mostly because I'm curious. I want to see how my pattern turned out. Uh, it, it wouldn't hurt to be a little bit more patient and let this dry more, but I'm, I'm not being more patient. So do as I say and not as I do, uh, but also let's, let's see how this turned out. Tough part about this is because the, the white hasn't cured, I'm trying to avoid leaving fingerprints. All right guys, so the tape is off of this now, except in the uh, cavities of course, because we still have to clear coat, so there's no point in pulling that off. Um, it occurs to me that you're looking at this backward, hang on a sec. There we go, all right. So yeah, it's, uh, it worked, <laughs> obviously. It's not the nicest Frankenstrat pattern that's ever been done, but uh, that's my fault. So if you're doing this, uh, maybe use a reference photo and of course it's up to you how you want your pattern to look when all is said and done just make sure you're thinking about 
the fact that when you put a piece of tape down, whatever's under it is going to stay the color that it is when you put the piece of tape down. So this is the pattern that I ended up with. It's, uh, yeah, but it's, it'll be good. Let's keep in mind that there's going to be a pick guard here. So a lot of this stuff is just not going to enter into it. And there will be a guard here as well. And that's about it. So we've got some areas where the paint went underneath the, uh, the tape and there's a little bit of haziness underneath where the, ah, sorry, a little, little bit of tape driving me crazy. My OCD kicked in. Anyway, there's some areas where, uh, where we could use a little bit of cleanup right on the edges of where the tape was. Um, so what I'm going to do is clean those up with a razor blade. I'm going to show you how to do that and then we'll move on to the clear coating stage in the next video. So I'm going to pull this thing off of, uh, off of here for now and we'll get a razor blade and we'll get to work on that. Let me find a spot where I'm having a problem here. Oh yeah, right here. Take, can we get uh, can we get a good zoom there? Yeah, yeah. You see that edge? How how uneven that is? Or down here? You see that extra red there? So it's not all that uncommon, particularly when you're taping this much, for your paint to bleed a bit. So what you do to fix that before we go ahead and clear coat is you just take your uh, your razor blade start it's kind of like shaving almost start well i like to start on the line that i'm trying to raise up to or scrape up to and pull away first to see if that'll get the paint off of there it's convenient if it does because then you don't have to worry about changing your lines at all but usually it doesn't so your other options are to either scrape up to the line like this you see what i'm doing yeah i'm looking at the guitar not the camera here scrape up to the line like that which I find generally works very well, as long as you're careful not to, uh, not to cut into your paint. Or scrape along the edge of the line like that. Sorry, closer. Scrape along the edge of the line like that. Right? Now, you saw me doing it kind of like that. That's not, not how you should be holding the razor. I'm just not on a table, so I can't really do it properly. Um, because I want to get nice and close to this camera. What you should actually be doing is holding it pretty much vertical and scraping up to the line. And that'll clean that line right up. All right, so once you've gone through with your razor blade and cleaned up all of those lines and edges, um, the next step is to kind of <laughs> reduce your ridges, if you will. So we've got all these tape lines on here. And in each of them, we've got the lower spot where the paint was uh, before the tape where the tape was rather uh, and then we've got the higher spot where our paint went on and you can feel those ridges between the two areas right and all of those will show up in your clear coat unfortunately so to make it a little easier on ourselves since we have to scuff everything up anyway we can now kind of reduce those ridges a little bit to make it easier to get a smooth finish after now there are a few ways to do this uh, one is to just kind of focus on them a little bit carefully so that you don't wreck them with your scotch pad or your sand plate paper when you're sanding this thing to prepare it for clear coat. So that's usually a fairly safe way of doing it. Another option is to go in with a razor blade and just kind of blade them down a little bit. Just making sure that you don't go too far with it and pull off a bunch of your, uh, your upper coat thus screwing up your lines again. So either any way you want to do it, I like to just do it with uh, I like to do it with a razor blade, honestly, but I also don't mind doing it this way with the scotch bright and just kind of focusing on those edges a little bit, trying to smooth them down a bit before then proceeding to scuff up the entire area. Anyway, once you've kind of gone through and done this, wipe it off, just kind of have a feel around. You'll still be able to feel the edges. You're not going to be able to get rid of them, but you know, if you feel some that are particularly aggressive, you can just go in again <laughs> and do this some more because if they're particularly aggressive, it means that your paint in that area that you added after is particularly thick, which means you have a little bit more leeway for doing this, honestly, before you go right through it. Once you have that done and your whole thing is scuffed up, 
my my lines need a little bit more attention here but uh but once you're finished with that step then it's a simple matter of cleaning the thing and it'll be ready for clear coat so that's it for the paint job prior to the clear coating stage and uh in the next video what i'll do is i'll get into the clear coat and we'll, we'll probably do uh a polyurethane and i might not title it as part of this series i think what i'll probably do is uh is title it how to get a reasonably professional coat of clear with spray cans or something like that um, so stay tuned check out my upcoming videos and the clear coating video for this one should be in there right away as always thanks for watching if you have any questions let me know in the comments and uh, see you next time